Hello everyone! Today's video has been a very highly requested video, so I wanted to make sure I did this. I was going to cover some of it in my Q&A that I just posted a few days ago, but I decided that this needed its own video so you guys could reference this whenever you want. But in today's video, we are going to be going over how I do all the rankings and establish all of my noble families that are in my royal family series, and just kind of explaining all of the titles and everything to you guys as much as I can. Can. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this. So as I have mentioned many times before, my game is its own little world. All of the different kingdoms are inspired by other cultures and other kingdoms, and I've just kind of made it my own. So I don't follow history rankings and rules exactly, but I am following some of it and kind of creating it into my own thing. A lot of it is just based off of what is accessible to me in the Sims game and what can be simplified because it's a Sims game so I can only do what I can. And then again, it's a game. This is my game and my world and how I've created everything. So I want to explain to you how I do it. You guys are absolutely welcome to do it however you want. There's so much room for creativity in the Sims game. So definitely don't feel like you need to follow how I do things. But I do just really quickly want to explain the actual definition of the noble families and go through the rankings of all of that. So this in information is based off how the British royals get their titles or British nobles get their titles. It says the simple answer is you're born with it or Her Majesty gives it to you. So you are either born with a title and can inherit it or or if you, oh gosh, okay. So the noble title, especially with the dukes, they are either given to you by the king or queen or you have to to inherit it. So if you are the child of a duke, typically it's the oldest male who would inherit the title. In my game, it's the oldest male or female. And I'll explain how all of that works as well. But the rankings of each of the titles are duke, marquis, earl, and baron. And then there's lord and lady. So I'll start from the bottom. So a lord and lady are the child of a duke or marquis or Earl or Baron. So let's go ahead and go, let's go to Willow Creek. I have this in Wittenberg and technically that's where this originated, but let's just go to Willow Creek right now. So for example, we have Baroness Valentina. I know it says Valen, but it's Valentina and Baron Matthew and their children, Lord Maxwell and Lord Lucas. And if they had a daughter, it would be Lady, whatever her name is. But whoever the oldest is would inherit the title of Baron. So even if it was a girl who's the oldest in my game, I still have them inherit the title. However, if we were to have, so let's say Lord Maxwell is the oldest and he marries, let's say someone in Oasis Springs. I'm trying to think of a good example. Oh, okay. So let's say he marries Lady Lorelai and Lady Lorelai is supposed to inherit the title of Duchess or yeah, I mean, sh she would inherit the title of Duchess. Technically, like whoever marries a Duke would become Duchess and the Marquis would be Marchioness. But to me, she would inherit inherit the title of Duchess and then whoever she marries would be Duke. So let's say Lord Maxwell wanted to become Duke because that's actually a higher title than what he would inherit. He would inherit the title of Duke, and but technically uh, Lorelai would be the Duchess and she would be the one who inherits that title and he would only get that title because he's marrying her. So in that case, I have whoever the youngest sibling is. So then it would be Lord Lucas who would inherit the title of Baron now that his brother is not there. That's not what happens in real life, but that's what I, that's my system in my game. And let's say Lord Lucas married someone else and he inherited another title because of like his wife's title. Then this house would be empty and I would probably have the monarch gift other Sims like this title because it's available. That is not what happens in real life. So in England, all of the princes, like there's like a Duke of Cornwall and there's a Duke of, what else is there? A Duke of Sussex, I think was the other one. So there are Dukes of different areas of land. I, I, I'm not explaining that right, but that's basically what it is. So there would be no such thing as like a Duke of England. For example, I have like a Duke of Willow Creek and a Baron of Willow Creek. But for me, it's just easier if I have them all be the Duke or the Baron of, of Willow Creek or whatever their kingdom name is. I'm not going to give them titles of like different areas. I guess I could have like the different neighborhoods, but it's like four houses. Like that's not, that's not anything. So this is just what I do. And this is how I simplify things. And then another example, example, as I mentioned, is if a monarch gives someone a noble title. So for example, when we first 
started Brindleton Bay, it was just King Jared and Queen Nina, and there was really nobody that was living here. So for them, we had Duke Victor and Duchess Lily. They moved here and they wanted to start new. They became like good friends with Jared and Jared could tell that they came from like a good background, although he didn't know much about them at the time, but he gifted them the Duke and Duchess of Brindleton Bay. So that was like a gift to them. And now they can pass that title down to their child. So Lord Wyatt is supposed to become the Duke of Brindleton Bay. Hopefully this all makes sense at this point. And then if you're also wondering, the male and female versions of the titles are Duke and Duchess. And then there is Marquis and Marchioness. Although when I first started, I think I was saying Marquis or Marquise or something like that. It, because it's a, it is another female way to say Marquis. Like it's a female version of Marquis. But the more common one is Marchioness. So I ended up changing it to that later in the series. Just in case you're confused if you're just watching the beginning of my royal family series so far. And then we have Earl and Countess. And then Baron and Baroness. And obviously Lord and Lady. So if a Lord or Lady married another Lord or Lady. And neither of them inherited any noble title. Their children would not become a Lord or Lady. The family technically comes from nobility. But they would be way further from like royalty and, and nobility than their parents are. So they don't get a title if their parents are just a lord or lady. I'm gonna try to find some questions that people have asked. I might not get, I don't think I've gotten all of them, but someone asked, aren't the children of dukes and duchesses called archdukes and archduchesses? Archduchesses. No, they are not. They are still called lords and ladies. Apparently an archduke is, this is according to the internet, is a title of the sovereign princes of the former ruling house of Austria. So that's definitely not a common thing, but it sounds like it was basically just a prince in Austria. So I don't use, use archduke and archduchesses and no, those are not the children of dukes and duchesses. There's also advisors, like royal advisors, and I haven't added that to my game yet, although I've talked about it in some of the most recent episodes that I've posted of the royal family. So I'll figure all that later, but you can also have a royal advisor. But yeah, anyway, so that, that's another option if you would like to have that. When I first started my game, so so this might help, but when I first started my game, I would make, let's go to Windenburg. I made the children of the royal family, like the princesses and princes, whoever was not inheriting the throne, I made the monarch give them the title of Duke and Duchess and, and Baron and Marquis and all of that. So if you're first starting, that's what you can do if you would like. I think I created a few families that the monarch had named Duke of like another kingdom or something like that and just had like one of their children marry them. So it was just kind of to create because I wanted the children of the royal family to marry someone who was noble or had a good standing. So that's why I did that. But you can also make like the children and turn them into dukes and duchesses and whoever they married would turn into like the opposite form of their title. I do have Windenburg. They all follow like the whole Duke, Marquis, Marchness, all of that. Same thing with Willow Creek. Oasis Springs I did too, even though Oasis Springs is inspired by Indian culture, I have them kind of assimilated into the culture of like Windenburg and Willow Creek just because these are my main kingdoms and kind of absorb their system. So that's why I also have Oasis Springs. They have that like those noble titles. And then same thing with Brindleton Bay. The king of Brindleton Bay was the child of the Oasis Springs royal family. So yeah, anyway. Now for Sulani. So Sulani is inspired by Polynesian culture. So for them, I don't have them have of dukes and duchesses and all of that. In Polynesian culture, I guess the king, it's still like a king or a queen, but it's also like a chief. There's different hierarchies of chiefs in Polynesian culture. And then one of like the noble titles is an Ali'i. So that's what I have. This family is the, the mom is the sister of the king. So she got that title. But I think as, oh, they're still over here. Princess Leilana and her family was staying here for a little bit, but when she becomes queen, her husband is from a Oasis Springs. I think she's going to, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? Not absorb. Oh, adapt. So she is going to adapt the noble titles that Oasis Springs and Windenburg and all of them have. So she is going to adapt that into Sulani culture, I feel like. But I think we're going to wait until she becomes queen so she can like kind of make her own rules and all of that because I don't 
think she's quite convinced her father to do that. Now for Glibberbrook, I also want to say one thing because I saw a comment. Someone was saying that Prince Takashi, his name is Japanese and they were saying that they know that this world is made up, but the family is inspired by Chinese culture. So it doesn't fit that Takashi has a Japanese name. And I just want to say that I don't think it matters. One, Araminta's name is English. It's not Chinese. So if she can have an English name, why can't someone have a Japanese name or any other name from another country? Also, I'm Taiwanese, Chinese, and Japanese, Native American, and Scottish, and like all these different cultures. But my middle name is an Indian surname, and I'm not Indian. So it's very common for people to have names from different countries and different cultures. So that's why I named Prince Takashi Prince Takashi because I didn't want to limit the family and I like to have the freedom. And if other families, they can have names from different cultures, then why can't this family too? Like, I don't want to leave them out of that. So sorry, I am getting so passionate about that, but I just wanted to explain that anyway. So I do have now established noble families in Glimmerbrook and I hadn't before. And that was mostly just because I didn't have time to do it beforehand. So now, now I do. I, again, this is inspired by Chinese culture. So I just want to give you a little bit of information. Okay, so noble ranks in China, a duke is called Gong, marquis is called Ho, and a baron is called Nan. I might not be pronouncing that exactly correctly. My mom might correct me on my accents later because she watches my videos sometimes. So I should have asked my mother before I did this, but that is what they are called. It doesn't look like, or it doesn't mention here from what I'm reading. This is from Albany EDU, by the way. They don't mention having a Earl or like a version of an Earl. For my game, I am keeping it as Duke and Marquis. Similarly to the fact that Guangxi is called Glimmerbrook. So technically, the Duke is called Gong and the Marquis is called Ho, but for the purposes of translating to English, this is what they are, the Marquis and the Duke. And I have not had another family move in yet. This is a very small kingdom, as you guys know. There's like barely any space here. I might have this be where the residents live, and then I might have them also have Magnolia Promenade be part of Glimmerbrook. But yeah, maybe someone gives them the land of Magnolia Promenade just because they're so small. It's so small small. It's so irritating. But maybe when we get more land, I'll have more families move in. I could have lords and ladies from other kingdoms move in and, or no, no, he'll probably give his children like some of this land. So he'll probably either give it to Takashi or Anya, depending on who they marry. We'll figure all that later. It's just a little hard when there's so much limited space. And it's the same thing with Selva Dorada. So for Selva Dorada, it has a lot of elements of different cultures. One, Selva Dorada is already inspired by Mayan culture, but I kind of incorporated Egyptian culture and a little bit of African culture in it as well. So it's kind of hard to categorize this into one specific inspired thing. I did do a little bit of research though. So for example, a Pasha, it's one of the ranks and also one of the highest titles in the 20th century kingdom of Egypt. It was also used as a higher rank in the Ottoman political and military system and an honorary title in some British peerage or knighthood. So there were so many titles. So again, same thing with Glimmerbrook, just for like translation purposes. I have this family as the Marquis of Selva Dorada, and then technically Jabari should be the Duke of Selva Dorada, but because he's living with his brother at the moment, just while he's in healing, I think I am going to have him move out soon, but we don't know what's gonna happen with him and Amira. So I was waiting to see what would happen there. So we're gonna have to see what's going on with them. So yeah, there's a little bit more room for flexibility. I apologize that my, like some of my kingdom aren't fully established and that I haven't figured them out quite yet. I haven't had just much time to really focus and establish things just because my full-time day job just kind of takes up my life most of the time. So I have been in such a routine of just recording things and getting videos out to you guys. And I haven't had time to like work out some of the kinks and details and like work on who's marrying who all the time in the game. I apologize if that takes you out of the series at all, just because things are not as established or correct, but I'm trying to make it as much as I can and hopefully it doesn't take you out of the series too much. I mean, I only recently gave Glimmerbrook and Selva Dorada those titles just for
for like the purposes of this video, I was like, okay, I need to make a decision. Otherwise this video is not gonna make any sense. But yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you decide what you guys wanna do. Again, this is just what I do. And I, I'm such a questioner, so I do what makes sense to me. So I kind of act on my own instincts. You can act on your own instincts. You don't have to follow everything that I do. Yeah, this video was just solely for the purpose of helping you guys. So I hope it was helpful. Again, not all historically accurate, just because this is a game. It's a Sims game, so we have to do what makes the most sense in the game and what is the most simplified too. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them. Please try not to keep it about history because I'm not a historian at all. If you have any questions about how I do things, you can ask me. If you have any questions about history and what titles mean, please look it up on the internet. But anyway, give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!